high time that we stood up. I'm sick and tired of people laying down. No more laying down. All right, let's let's finish off where we left off yesterday. This is the <clears throat> the whole theme of this show today is on freedom of speech, and it kind of was a little bit yesterday, and it always is every day. Which I don't even understand why freedom of speech is even a topic of discussion. I really don't. We have freedom of speech. We have it. There's nothing more to discuss, period. Conversation ends. But no. But no. Well, this assistant professor, he's not even a real professor. He's an assistant professor. His name is Eli, and then his last name, Jesus Christmas. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, I'm not even going to attempt it. Not with my broken left-handed tongue. Forget it. We're going to call him Eli Creep, because that's what he is. He's a creep. East Carolina University in North Carolina. What the hell is going on in North Carolina? Both them Carolinas. Anyway, he forbade his students from thanking God. Imagine that. In a personal statement that will be delivered during the departmental graduation ceremony on Friday. Anyway, we went over the the email. I'll read it real quick again. It's worth another read. Hi, everyone. This is this uh, assistant principal. And it's sent to chemistry majors, and then it's blacked out. I don't know. Maybe there's a name there. I don't know. But to chemistry majors. Hi, everyone. Just a reminder to everyone that if you are planning on being at the graduation ceremony, you can provide me with a personal statement that thanks someone or tells us your future plans. I have some submissions that needed to be edited. So here are some guidelines. Well, again, as I said yesterday, if this is a personal statement, who the hell is anybody else to edit a personal statement? How is it personal? When you edited my personal statement, it's not personal anymore. It's not my statement anymore. It's yours. That part right there just pisses me off. The fact that he said needed to be edited, needed by whom? You? A personal statement is a personal statement. There is no need to edit somebody else's personal statement. It's not a personal statement then. Number one, you can't thank God. I'm sorry about this, and I don't want to have to outline the reasons why. So here this little coward says you can't thank God, but I can't tell you why, because I'm a coward. But again, I'm sure that they can thank Allah. Provide me something written in the third person. Think that someone will read this. It won't be you. Keep it brief. I don't give you a real word limit, but at least max of 35 words. Blah, 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 blah. Keep it family friendly and not gross. Shut up. Thanks. I hope everyone understands these guidelines. Well, no, I don't understand these guidelines, and I'm sure that anybody who's a half a broken wet noodle for a frickin' brain doesn't understand these guidelines. If someone wants to thank God, they have the right to thank God. Who the hell are you to tell anybody who they can and cannot thank? God! I don't understand why liberals can't see this. How can they not see this is a a deliberate violation of freedom of speech? Because it's not their speech. If they agree with it, then it's freedom. If they don't agree with it, well, then it's hateful and racist. Well, speaking of God and the Bible, and again, you all know that I am not a very, very big spiritual guy. I'm just not. But I don't have, I'm not threatened by religion. It's not the religion that threatens me. It's how you use that religion that threatens me. You can use any religion wrong or right. It all depends on how you use it. Those cockamamie creeps, those Baptists over there in uh, in the South, with the Westboro Baptist Church, whatever, 
the the pastor he just died um I think in the summer, which uh, that really broke my freaking heart. But those people are using Christianity in the wrong way. Protesting soldiers' funerals? I mean that's sick. That's not God. I'm pretty sure that's not God. I'm pretty sure Jesus would not be proud. Pretty sure about that one. I'm not an expert on God and Jesus, but I'm going to go ahead and put my chips down on Jesus would not be proud of that Westboro Baptist Church. Well, officials at Broward County Public Schools banned a fifth grader, a fifth grader, from reading the Bible. Oh, my God, that horrible, racist, discriminating book, the Bible again. During free reading time. Hmm. What is free reading? Well, it's free if I say it's free. You're free to read whatever I want you to read. Well, that's not free. If it's free reading time, I get to read whatever the hell I want to read. I can read about rape. I can read about incest, but I can't read the Bible. I wonder if they would do the same thing to a, a child reading the Koran. Well, no, we can't do that. You see, well, you know, we're afraid they might, might tell their parents and send their jihadis over there, and they'll cut my head off. So you go ahead and read that Koran, but don't you dare read that Bible, you racist bastard, you. Give me that Bible. I tell you that. This is how out of whack this country is. My God! What are they so afraid of the Bible for? I don't know. I, I, I'm at a loss of words, man. I can't figure it out. doesn't make any sense to me at all. So Giovanni Rubio is a fifth grader who had been given a Bible at church as a Christmas gift. Well, you can't say Christmas now in New York. You can't say that word. So he celebrates Christmas. That's already one strike. Then he gets a Bible. That's strike two. And then he reads it in class. That's strike three. I have to send this little bastard out of school. That's right. Kick him out of school, little hater. Little fifth grade hater. It's his favorite book, so he decided he'd like to read it during the time in class where students are allowed to read anything they choose, except for the Bible. But you can read about rape. You can read about pedophilia. You can read about incest. That's fine. You can read that. But don't you dare read that Bible. That's horrible. I don't know how these, these parents would allow this child to even have a Bible in his, in his hands in the first place. Oh, these haters. All these haters out there. Good God. we got to put an end to them. Maybe we should throw this little fifth grader in jail. Maybe that's what we ought to do. We'll learn him. Read that Bible, will you? Huh? All right. Get over here. Swarnia Thomas. This is the, uh, the woman's name. I guess it's a woman's name. I don't know. S-W-O-R-N-I-A. I guess you pronounce it Swarnia? Swarnia? I don't know. I don't know. So I don't know if it's male or female. Swarnia Thomas. That's the name of the teacher. So if you recognize that name, you might want to send her a, you know, a little note. You see her in the supermarket, you know who she is? You might want to ask her, what the hell's your freaking problem, lady? Huh? What the hell's your goddamn problem? On April 8th, Thomas told Giovanni... He's not allowed to read the Bible in her class. Oh, so it is a her. Okay. And ordered him to put it away. Put it away. We will punish you. Put it away. Giovanni, the child, fifth grader, asked her to call his father, Paul Rubio. So Thomas did. Leaving a voicemail that included, I noticed that Giovanni has a book, a religious book. In the classroom, oh my God, oh no, brought a religious book in the classroom. Again, I'm just wondering if he was reading a Koran, if she would have done this. You think? You damn skippy, she wouldn't have said one 
freaking word. Not one word if this kid was reading the Koran. See, because they're afraid. They're, they think by trying to kiss up to these Islamic terrorists that they're not going to cut their head off. Well, I'm sorry, but what do they call that? Stockholm syndrome? Whatever the hell that is? That's a stupid syndrome, a stupid name to, to use anyway. I don't like using those stupid phrases and names. But there is a little bit of truth to it, a little psychology to that. These people think that if they, they praise these Islamic terrorists, these um, um, Islamic um, extremists, oh, yeah, oh, you can do whatever you want, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we love Islam, blah, 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 blah. please don't cut my head off. Oh, they don't care how much you praise them. The fact is you're white, you're an American. They don't care. They're going to cut your head off. They don't give a damn. You can't appease your enemy. You can't befriend your enemy. You can't do it. It won't work. It never has in the past and never will in the future. It just doesn't work. Again, this is an educator. Obviously, this educator hasn't been educated. So why is she in the classroom? Well, a very good question. Why are the overwhelming vast majority of these teachers in the classroom? That's the question I have. The good teachers, we don't get a chance to talk about them. It'd be nice. It'd be nice to talk about a good teacher once in a while. You know what? It would be really nice to talk about a good policeman. I'd love to talk. I'd love to have respect for the police department again. And I say again because I had it. But they pushed me away. I didn't run away from the police. They pushed me away. The government pushed me away. These teachers pushed me away. And I grew up in the school district, so I do know where I'm coming from. I grew up having to listen to teacher mentality. Even in the early 70s, the teacher mentality was still the same as it is today. It's just more open today. They're allowed to get away with more discrimination and more hate than they were back then. But it's still the same. It's only getting worse. It will only continue to get worse. But like us, stand up. Don't be afraid. If you're afraid to fight, you need to stay the hell out of the war. Because you're not helping anything. You're making it worse. He's not permitted to read those books in my classroom, Miss Thomas said on the voicemail. Wow, he's not permitted to read those books. Those books. What does she mean by that? Those books. What does that mean, Miss Thomas? Huh? Well, the father then contacted the school's principal. And another weird name. Orinthea. Oh, God, with these names. Orinthea Diaz who brought in the school's legal department. You've got to bring in a legal department? Look, it's free reading time. Why would, you need a, why would you need a goddamn lawyer for free reading time? Huh? Was this kid reading about pornography, about rape, about incest, about pedophilia? Maybe then, Miss Thomas, you might have some concern. But when the kid's reading the Bible, you have nothing to say. Shut up. Maybe you should read the Bible, Miss Thomas. Maybe you might learn something. None of them are willing to acknowledge that Giovanni has a constitutional right to read the Bible. Can you imagine that? The entire school's legal department are not willing to acknowledge that this fifth grader, this racist homophobic, misogynistic, discriminating, hateful little fifth grader has a constitutional right to read the Bible. The Bible. But again, if he was reading the Koran, then we wouldn't even be talking about this, would we? Hell frickin' no, we wouldn't. But yet, here we are, talking about it. Miss Thomas, you are a creep. You are a threat. People like this Swarina and this Or Orinthea, 
and this legal department, these are the people that are a threat to this country, not us. People who respect freedom, freedom for everybody, not just for us. Okay, this freedom, all these freedoms that we have in this document that I'm holding in my hands, the Constitution, okay, the freedom is for everybody. It's not just for a select few. Not just for the Koch brothers. Not just for the Tea Party. Not just for those white, rich, gray-haired Republican men. Because we all know that, you know, us on the right, we hate women. I mean, just hate them. Those penile challenged creatures. Good God, what kind of rights do they have? Get your ass back in the kitchen and cook me something to eat. The hell, you have a right to speak? No, 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 sweetheart. You're a woman. I'm a man. You don't have any rights until I give them to you. Well, if Florida had their way, women wouldn't have any rights. They voted... The Democrats voted for Sharia law in Florida. Hmm. Which means women won't be able to allow to drive, show any skin, won't be allowed to go out in public. This is what they want. And if they do show, I guess, their hand, any part of their skin that these these men don't like, well, they get beaten in the street. Is that what's going to happen now in Florida? Huh? Lift up her burqa and show her kneecaps. Now she's going to get beaten in the streets. Huh? Get stoned to death. Get acid poured in her face. That's what they do. If a woman accidentally looks at a man, and they somewhat sexual, they pour acid on their face. Deforms their whole face. They cut their noses off. They beat them in public. Is that what you want, Florida? Well, you Democrats voted for it, so it must be what you want. Sometimes I wish we'd just give these bastards exactly what they want. I mean, that old phrase, I know, I know it's corny, I know it's old, but it's true. You have to be very, very, very careful of what you ask for in this world, because you never know who's out there who's going to give it to you. And there are people out there that will give it to you and have no trouble doing it. 